I'm Sergeant Chris Amser, the Supervisor of the Aurora Police Department Media Relations Unit. Today we're going to give you a briefing on the incident that occurred yesterday. Speaking first will be Sergeant Steve Jokerst. His last name is spelled J-O-K-E-R-S-T. He is the Supervisor of our Major Crimes Homicide Unit. He will discuss the homicide that occurred at 142 Del Mar Circle. Uh, then after that, Lieutenant Matt Clark, spelled C-L-A-R-K, with the Denver Police Department Major Crimes Division, will give you a quick uh, briefing on the officer-involved shooting investigation that occurred at 14572 East 46th Avenue. And then finally, uh, Chief of Police Nicholas Metz, M-E-T-Z, of the Aurora Police Department will give you an update on our officers who was shot uh, condition. Uh, Sergeant Jokers. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Once again, Sergeant Steve Jokers, S-T-E-V-E, -E, last name Jokers, J-O-K-E-R-S-T, and I am currently with the Aurora Police Department Major Crime Homicide Unit. On November 8th, 2016, at approximately 11.21 a.m. in the morning, the Aurora Public Safety Communications Department received a 911 call for service involving weapons with an injured party at the location at 142 North Del Mar Circle. Initial responding officers located an injured male suffering from apparent gunshot wounds in the parking lot on the west side of 142 North Del Mar Circle. Officers immediately began to render aid and summon for emergency medical assistance. Members of the Aurora Fire Department arrived on scene and transported the injured male to the University of Colorado Hospital where the victim succumbed to his injuries. During the initial investigation, officers located several eyewitnesses who provided detailed information of the suspect vehicle, license plate, driver, and direction to travel from the scene. This information was provided to other responding officers, which included members of specific Aurora Police Department specialized units, as well as the Denver Police Department, who were able to locate that involved vehicle at an address in Northeast Denver. Uh, before I turn this over to uh, Lieutenant Clark, I would like to remind you that this is currently, on our portion, uh, an active investigation, and we won't be providing uh, the identity of the victim or any other information perti pertaining to uh, our case uh, at 142 North Dunbar. So, Lieutenant? Thanks. Morning, Lieutenant Matt Clark with the Denver Police Department's Major Crimes Division. I'll give you some information about the incident that we had uh, that was the back end of the homicide, it was uh, the second half. Uh, it occurred at 14572 East 46th Avenue, which is in uh, the Montbello area near the area of 46th Avenue and Durham Court. Um, the Denver Police Department received an initial notification about the Aurora homicide with the suspect information at about 1131. Um, that information included specific details about the armed and dangerous suspect who had just committed the homicide in Aurora and a specific vehicle uh, by make, model, and license plate. The license plate listed to an address uh, in Montbello on East 46th Avenue, uh, which directed District 5 officers to that location. Um, upon their arrival, they located that same vehicle. Uh, it's a black uh, Chevy Monte Carlo two-door uh, in the driveway there. It was unoccupied and there was no other um, individuals outside of the residence at that point. Uh, simultaneously, Aurora um, investigators, uh, officers began arriving in the area. Uh, and there was coordination between the two agencies uh, while they were waiting for additional tactical resources to assist uh, in attempting to contact the subject at that location there. Over the next several minutes, uh, as the coordination occurred, officers were prepared um, for an individual to come out of the residence and to contact him, and that in fact did happen. Uh, the subject emerged from the residence. Uh, he was carrying a infant, we believe to be his child, in a carrier. He loaded the carrier uh, into the vehicle. There was specific concern of the officers at that point uh, if that vehicle became mobile, knowing that he had just committed a homicide 30 minutes prior and his propensity for violence and likelihood of being armed. Uh, the decision was made to attempt to contact him at that location um, prior to him getting into the vehicle. So the infant was placed in the vehicle. Um, he was standing outside of the vehicle as an Aurora tactical team uh, of four officers uh, came up the street. They were in an unmarked car, but the subject uh, did identify them and recognize them to be officers. Uh, rather than attempting to flee, he instead retrieved a handgun and began firing upon the officers. 
The officers were concerned and aware of the infant in the vehicle and they directed uh, their specific direction of fire. Uh, the Aurora officers was directly at the subject and not towards or in the line towards where the infant was in the vehicle. Uh, the subject was struck by the rounds that were fired and he went down and was pronounced deceased at that location um, in front of the residence there. During the exchange of gunfire, uh, one of the rounds that was fired by the subject did strike an Aurora police officer who was uh, the driver of the uh, tactical vehicle that was approaching. That officer was extracted from the car by Denver and Aurora officers uh, and he was subsequently um, immediately transported in a Denver police vehicle to University Hospital. And that was by a Denver police supervisor and an Aurora police officer in that vehicle and they rushed him to University for immediate treatment. Um, the, just so you're aware, I can give you a brief background. Uh, the subject uh, was deceased. He'll be identified by the Denver Medical Examiner's Office. He has a limited criminal history. He has uh, some, some arrests for assault and a robbery, but it's not a lengthy criminal history uh, as far as that's concerned. We did recover a gun at the scene. Um, by the suspect. We also uh, recovered several shell casings, um, further indication that he did fire upon the officers with multiple shell casings. Three police officers uh, discharged their weapons in this incident, two from Aurora and one from Denver. Uh, I won't go into the details of the officers or their identities, but I can tell you that the Aurora supervisor with the tactical team uh, came on the Aurora Police Department in 2003. Uh, a tactical officer from Aurora who was involved came on in 2001. And the Denver police officer uh, who was involved as a District 5 patrol officer who came on the police department in 2013. Uh, through this investigation, we work cooperatively with the Aurora Police Department Major Crimes Unit as part of our investigative protocol for officer-involved shootings. We interviewed a number of witnesses. All the officers uh, that were available uh, gave statements. We still have yet to interview the injured officer. We will do so when he's ready to, do, uh, to provide an interview. Um, you can imagine the call of a officer being shot uh, gets a lot of attention from other officers and I'd like to take an opportunity to thank the surrounding jurisdictions that came into Denver. We had uh, Arapahoe County, Adams County, Commerce City, Aurora and Denver police officers all responded immediately to help contain this uh, chaotic scene and it was appreciated. Uh, at this point uh, if you have any additional information if there's anybody that witnessed either of these incidents either the Aurora homicide for the Denver incident involving the police shooting, we'd ask you to contact the respective agency or Crime Stoppers um, with that information and pass that along. Uh, in conclusion, uh, again, thanks for the other agencies and our thoughts and prayers are with the Aurora Police and the officer and his family as he uh, works towards his recovery. I'll address any questions after uh, Chief Metz speaks. Thank you. Good morning and thank you all for being here. Um, since October 1st of 2016, this has not been a good month and a half for law enforcement around our country. In fact, nationwide, since October 1st, um, our country has lost 14 police officers to gunfire. And I'm here to tell you today that we feel incredibly blessed uh, that I'm not sitting up here giving you that kind of message. On the other hand, um, there were a couple comments I heard yesterday following the incident when, in fact, one of them was on a radio show where they said, yeah, an officer had been shot. Oh, then now it's not life threatening injuries and it must have not, the shooting must have not been that bad. Um, I want to tell you that um, we came very close to losing a brother here at Aurora Police Department. With the officer's permission, um, I want to show you a picture of the entrance wound to uh, our officer. As you can see here, it's just right around, uh, right up by his nose. Um, had that round either taken a different type of trajectory or been a half inch to an inch higher, um, I'm not sure what kind of message we would have been giving you today. So we feel very blessed uh, that he is going to survive and we feel very blessed that uh, um, we're not planning a funeral. This officer has an incredible reputation on our department. Um, he was hired in 2003. Uh, he's been assigned to a variety of units besides patrol. He was assigned to the District 3 uh, DART team in 2008. 
He was recently assigned to our SRT team, which is essentially our SWAT team. He received the Distinguished Service Cross in 2011, and he received that for <clears throat> responding to an active shooter incident in an apartment complex and, shoot, and rescuing a shooting, shooting victim. And he uh, received the Meritorious Service Ribbon in 2015, uh, in which um, a suicidal subject was threatening officers with a rifle, and uh, uh, he was able to uh, end that uh, without further injury to anybody else. Uh, the two officers, at least from the Aurora Police Department, that were involved, uh, both of them are from um, our SRT. Uh, one is a sergeant, it's a female sergeant, she's been on the department since 2003, also a supervisor within our SRT. The other is an officer who's a male since 2001, he's a lateral from another agency and also a, uh, a member of the SRT. These officers, as well as the officer from Denver, um, reacted, in my opinion, courageously and heroically. And had they not reacted the way they did, uh, they, they uh, may not have been able to prevent uh, our officer from getting further injury. I also think it's really important that we thank the Denver Police Department, the two officers and the, that were there from Denver PD who immediately uh, put our officer in their car and uh, rushed him to Anschutz. Uh, it just shows uh, that you know the relationship between the Aurora Police Department and the Denver Police Department uh, is a very strong and solid one. And we work with Denver on a lot of different types of issues, uh, but this is just a, uh, to me, a prime example of how our departments come together when crisis hits and do an excellent job of uh, taking care of each other. Following the uh, incident, uh, our officer was, as I, as I said, rushed to uh, University of Anschutz. Um, the, one of the first things we deployed was a new unit that we call our trauma response team. This is a group of officers who are specially trained to respond to situations where one of our own, or even if it's another officer from another agency, uh, who's been uh, seriously injured. Uh, we come in, we work with the hospital staff to make sure that not only is the officer taken care of, but also to ensure that the basic operations of the hospital are able to continue. Uh, they came in, they did a great job. They were able to arrange for the family to be brought in. We've been working incredibly close with the family, uh, also working with the family to bring in extended family from out of state. So uh, that is working out very well. Um, I want to give a special shout out to my officers from Aurora, uh, those who not only were at the, the initial homicide scene who were handling things the way they need to be handled, but also those officers who either were already on scene um, at 46 in Montbello or the officers who immediately responded. Uh, I, I went up to uh, that scene not long after the uh, help the officer came out, and I can tell you from my own uh, observations, uh, the collaboration between the Aurora police officers and the Denver officers um, in making sure that that scene was as secure as possible because it was still very fluid uh, was amazing to watch and I couldn't be more proud of my officers and the officers from uh, the Denver Police Department. I also want to thank uh, the Anschutz Medical Center. Their staff, doctors were absolutely uh, on it. They were providing whatever assistance um, our officer or family or other officers needed and they really went out of their way to make sure that uh, our, our police family was well taken care of. Uh, so with that, we'll open up to questions. Chief, what's the status of the baby today? Can you tell us a little bit? I'm going to see if someone else can maybe answer that. Yeah, the baby the baby was okay. It was checked out. It's perfectly fine. It's been released. Uh, it's it's uh, with another family member at this point. And just to clarify, so the suspect was inside the house with his baby. Yes, ma'am. officers called him to come out, or did he just happen to come out? He came out on his own. So they were prepared to deal with him if he did come out, and that's, in fact, what happened. They, they, they made no attempts prior to bringing him out of the residence. Places the baby in the car. Yes, ma'am. Is outside the car, sees the cops. That's when he pulls his firearm and that's, starts shooting or just running and shooting? No, he does not run at any point. He, take, he maintains his ground there and, and instead engages the officers. Okay. Yeah. Had the officers ever gotten out of the car? Uh, no. Uh, the, the two Aurora officers had not. The Denver officer was out of his vehicle. And, and are we releasing the name of the, the Aurora officer that's been uh, injured? Not at this time. How close was that shot, roughly? Uh, we're still working to determine that. How many shots were fired? So we have, mul we have multiple. Uh, 
three officers fired multiple shots uh, each from their weapons, and similarly, the suspect fired multiple shots from his. We're still executing search warrants on the on his vehicle and, and uh, doing some crime scene work to make sure we get the accurate count. Can you, um, sorry, uh, can you be a bit more specific if you can? When you say that multiple shots were fired, but the baby was not in the line of fire, I think it's difficult for us, you know, civilians sure. to understand how gunfire is going on and yet the baby somewhere on the scene and, and yet the baby is not in danger. Sure, so they knew the baby, the, the but my understanding, the Aurora officers knew the uh, infant had been placed into the vehicle, um, and then he was outside of the passenger side of the vehicle, uh, a couple feet west of it, and so they were directing their, the direction of fire was at, specifically at him, um, and, and they were cognizant knowing that if, if they were off line with their fire, that it could potentially go into that vehicle. Um, so in doing so, they made sure that the direction of their fire was, was always at him. How does that, that element of an infant being there change the reaction? How do officers become trained on that kind of thing? That's, it just seems like it elevates everything. Well, it absolutely does. It was definitely a concern. They were cognizant of that and the, the risk that the, the child was in, both potentially being with this individual and by, by their response. So um, they, they were aware of it and tried, did the best to mitigate the situation. Was there any way to avoid gunfire in this particular case because there was a child involved in the scene? The, the, the subject forced a confrontation with the officers. He fired upon the officers. Uh, as they were in the area, they did everything they could tactically to contain him, and he was definitely a absolute threat to the community. Did he, when he, and I, I don't know if you know this at this point, because I know it's early on, but do you know that if, when he fired first, is that the point that he hit the Aurora police officer? I don't think we'll be able to ever sequence which round hit the officer. Was, do you have any information, sir, sir, if the baby was with the suspect at the time of the shooting in Aurora? Was I do not know that. Do we know what motivated that as well? I mean, we, I certainly have heard things from people who were close to the family. Um, do we know why he went over to this apartment and targeted, did he target this person, the other we're victim? Just like I stated earlier, we're, we're actually in the process of still interviewing witnesses and, and gathering information from, from that particular scene. And, and at this particular point, we're still trying to develop that to include the information uh, regarding the baby there. Uh, we do not know that right now. So did the victim and the suspect know each other? We don't know. Did he have a gun in his hand when he came out? He had the baby in a carrier strapped to his chest. Did he have a gun in his hand? No, sir. He, we believe he retrieved it from his waist area. <laughs> from the car? No, uh, from his waistband. Oh, but waistband. I, okay, I don't sorry. have any information. He got it from the vehicle. Gentlemen, what's the, uh, does the officer, your officer, does he have a rank? He's an officer. Yeah. Chief, could you hold that picture on the front of the podium? We'll just grab a quick close up there. For sure. Just for, it'll take us two seconds. And we're going to provide everyone with a copy. Okay. And we'll also send an electronic version to your desk. Great, guys. Chief, it's <clears> not often that when we hear in the public that uh, someone was shot in the face that we get to see what it looks like. Can you talk about why you are showing that and how come there's no entrance or can you explain how come there's no en uh, exit wound or how it, how it, where it goes, what goes on there? Yeah, well, as far as why there's no exit wound, I'm, I'm not a physician, so I'm, and, uh, so I'm not going to be able, to, not able to really uh, uh, give you an answer to that. Uh, I can say that the round was lodged internal inside him still, so the round did penetrate. Um, as far as why I'm showing the picture, I think right now it's important for the public to know um, the kinds of dangers our officers are facing, and in particular for this situation. I think it's incredibly important to know just how close uh, and how serious uh, 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 this situation was for this officer. Um, that, again, um, this was not something that was, uh, oh, he got shot and he's he's fine and okay, must have not been that serious. Again, I, I feel that uh, it was a it was a, a miracle, if not a blessing, that uh, that he's still with us. So did the officer actually, when when he started firing, the three Aurora officers were still in the car? Is that right? We're going to have to ask the lieutenant. Uh, <laughs> that's correct. The Aurora officers were in their vehicle approaching the residence when they were fired upon, and they returned fire from their vehicle. That's okay. the evidence is showing. But the Denver officer was already there and was visible outside of his car, where that's maybe what motivated this for the suspect? So, it, it, and that's possible. So I'm not sure what triggered the suspect recognizing it was the officers, obviously. So, uh, but yes, the, the Denver officer was out of his vehicle. He was a uniformed officer. It was walking up to the house in the car. No, he he had a, he had a stationary position that he okay. took there. Okay. 
Okay. Any yes. other questions? No, One more question. I know you've addressed, you, you addressed this, um, the fact that an, uh, a Denver police officer put your officer in the car and took him to the hospital and you're grateful. Is that something that you guys talk about? Is this, you know, the lessons of the Aurora movie theater that, you know, this just, there's a different, resp different response. You don't wait, you just go. I can't say specific whether it's from the movie theater. I mean, you, everyone knows that many of our officers made that type of decision that night and, and, and because of that saved the lives of many. Um, I think there was just a concern that how long was it going to take for emergency medical personnel to get there. I can tell you from my conversation with the with one of the doctors, uh, he, he came out and said that uh, uh, those officers definitely made the right decision to load him up and get him get him to the hospital. So he actually uh, applauded that decision. And if so, we're not releasing the names of either the victim or the suspect in this? Uh, to this? At this point, I don't, no, I don't believe like so. Like I said, the, the, the investigation's ongoing, and that's going to be actually through for our victim regarding uh, our related incident on Del Mar. Um, that's going to come from uh, Rapo County Coroner's Office. Okay, but the suspect is... The suspect? So, similarly, the suspect is Denver Coroner's Office. Okay. We'll release that later this afternoon, I anticipate. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Um, if you want to just say.